Exactly. Hey, Chiquitas. Hey, bitches. Oh, Did you like that? It was very good. Very Thank good. you. Um, <laughs> so I have to admit that last night I binged watched the entirety of series two of Stage. We appreciate um, you. And literally, Not. I couldn't stop watching. Um, so I suppose I'm going to come to you first, Simon. Um, the last time we spoke, uh, it was just off the back of Series 1. How did Series 2 come about? Uh, so we were sort of blown away a little bit by how well Series 1 went down, especially for something that we sort of made in our living rooms and kitchens mm. that we thought was a sort of odd little, yeah, it was an oddity. And, and then suddenly everyone loved it and there was sort of... When lockdown kept being sort of rolled in diff under different titles mm. being rolled out, there was a certain felt desire online for more to sort of speak to that. But we were a bit nervous. We thought we it felt like we'd caught lightning in a bottle and we were very nervous about mm. coming back and making some more. So it was only if we could find the right idea for it. And if David and Michael obviously were up for making more, um, we found out that they were, but that we had a very short window to do it. So we sort of just, yeah. Pulled, pulled the pulled the chain and went right well let's do it so we had we started at the beginning of august writing it i think and then filmed in three weeks through september the whole thing so it was all just mad but it was it was crucial obviously that we had david and michael and that it felt like we weren't just retreading the same ground that it was slightly, mm. slightly different well and as soon as we had those things it all sort of moved alarmingly quickly well, that's the thing I think uh, about the second series. It's tonally very, very different to the first um, in the sense that it references the fact that staged has happened. And I think that's what took me by surprise when I watched it to begin with. I was like, am I watching an interview about stage now? Or is this, what, 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 what is going on? Um, Simon, um, David Tennant wants to punch your face. <laughs> um, he, he calls you a fucking patronizing mollusk. Um, mm -hmm. Now, there are some amazing one-liners in this show. Where does that pent-up anger uh, come from? <laughs> well, you, you'll notice that it's mostly directed at myself, so it's yeah. self-loading, really, crucially. Yeah. And that's always, there's always a little voice in the back of my head telling me that I'm a patronising mollusk, so it's easy to put that in the voice of somebody <laughs> of somebody else. I think it's it's it became clear in the first series that... Well, there, there was an, I don't know if I mentioned this to you before, but when we were making the first series, there was an idea initially of Lucy playing the director character <clears throat> so that I could just focus on writing it and directing it. And then we thought the director has to be somebody that they just absolutely pound on. David and Michael can just destroy and it doesn't feel appropriate for that to be. It didn't seem as funny if that funny was directed if that was a, me. <laughs> a young girl yeah. trying to make her way in a man's world. Um, yeah. And then in the second series, having those people, those amazing guest stars coming in, mm even more so, each of those comes in effectively to diminish David and Michael. So they still need somebody that they can just Welsh on whenever they need to. And mm -hmm. up, up, I, up I stand to the mark. And <laughs> you put your yeah. hand up and you're like, that will be me. Um, uh, Lucy, um, to some extent, do you agree, and I quote, that Simon can't write women? <laughs> No, I obviously don't agree. This is yeah. a funny thing. Isn't it? Doesn't your girlfriend uh, sometimes says that Simon can't write women or mocks him for not writing women enough? Um, but no, I don't agree with that at all. It's funny, isn't it? Because you've gone to such effort. I love the, the little storyline that you see with the three women. Mm. And I love the reference. There were bits that I hadn't seen actually last night. So I was thoroughly enjoying watching it and the little reference to the vegetable test and all of that kind of thing. But you know, you can't get away from the fact that this, like you said about, what did you say, lightning in a bottle, bottle mm. that this sort of came about so quickly of, it's of a totally bizarre situation. And it was sort of who is game and available and will make a great team like that, who can we get to? And so it has ended up being this story that revolves around basically three fantastic men in the middle. But I love that there's a real, I think you've gone to a real effort to make sure that we see the important storylines that are going on and, and you know the the women what's the phrase we just watched um my big fat greek wedding over christmas right and Lovely there's film. a wonderful bit in that where they talk about you know the husband is the head of the marriage but the wife is the neck that turns the head mm. and um i think it very much feels like that doesn't it like the female characters are sort of the the masters of manipulation actually um making everything happen so no i don't think i think my brother can can write women very well so. 
Um, and I suppose, you know, because we've all been stuck at home, ha- have you actually met Georgia and Anna and, and have you sat? Have you, you, you've never actually met them in person? Is that No, I actually that mad? Would, uh, text um, Georgia last night to say, God, these the cuddles are going to be so large for people who've never met each other when we eventually meet each other. I think there's a real oh. weird sense of knowing each other very, very well hmm. and, and not having actually ever been in a in a room together. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we might get to the end of lockdown. And you go, oh, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> yeah, we've <laughs> like, seen oh. enough. It's like, so, no, so no, fun. thanks. Um, you know, fun. as I was watching the series, it, it kept surprising me with um, which amazing guest star was going to come next. You know, you've got the likes of, you know, without any spoilers, but you've got Whoopi Goldberg, Ewan McGregor, Christoph Waltz, Simon. How did all these wonderful people get on board? Well, not much the same as the first time, really. There was well with two differences. Again, people are for the most part sitting around doing nothing. Mm. You know, you, you sort of, I think, feel like some people at a certain level of celebrity or wealth might, the rules might not apply to them. And it seems that they do and that these people are, these, these are actors and this is their craft and this is what they want to do, but they're sitting at home unable to do anything. So it's a much easier request than it would normally be to mm. go to these people of absolutely that extraordinary level and go, do you want to come and do this? Yeah. Added to that, it's you can do it from your own home. We need no more than two hours of your time. And the difference this time was that we had a thing. You know, it was one thing for Samuel L. Jackson and Dame Judi Dench to jump in last time, and Adrian and Nina and, you know, all of that set. But it was a different thing this time because we went, look, we've made a whole series of it. it here it is. Watch it. It looks like this. It's been received like this. And to find, like, people like Christoph was a fan of it, we found, <laughs> had seen it wow. already. And Ken Jong was a huge fan of it. And, and, and then other people who we offered it, who watched it, who then came on the call going, I hadn't seen it, but I've seen it now. And I'm so thrilled to be like, it was, Maybe and these are idols of mine. Yeah. And then to sort of jump on a Zoom call with them and then be like, I'm so thrilled to be here. And you, well, to, to get a text last night from Phoebe Wallerbridge as she's watching it and go, well, how is this my life? Do you um, still get quite starstruck around these people? Because I find that because like yourself, you know, doing these interviews and, and talking to people over Zoom, I think there's very much a sense that I, I think that people aren't doing anything else. So it's like, oh, well, surely they've got 10 minutes to do like a quick interview with me. Do, yeah. do you still get starstruck? I get completely starstruck, yeah. except, <laughs> except that I get starstruck for sort of, maybe 20 seconds at the very beginning. Mm. But then it's it's not, if I was directing them in any other, because I've, mm. I've yet to be on a film set and direct a traditional piece of film or television. If I was going onto a normal set with them, <clears throat> they would have much more experience of that particular form of making it than I would. So I think mm. I'd be both starstruck and nervous. This time, this is, this is my, yeah. this is my world now. So they yeah. join and I have 15 seconds of, oh my God, you're amazing. And then I'm like, have you set up the software? And they're like, no. And I'm like, don't worry, I can, <laughs> I can help with that. So the status sort of goes like, like, like a T before. Like a TV tech guy. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I am. May, all maybe, I am. maybe all your TV shows and, and work is now going to be done via Zoom. You know, who, who knows? Um, <laughs> Lucy, you know, the whole series itself is about, Essentially, David and Michael uh, it, finding who's going to replace David and Michael in Staged mm. America. Mm. Um, if you had to choose um, an actor or actress to play you and Simon in Staged America, who, who would you choose? Well, actually, I thought watching it last night, there's a very Ewan McGregor look to you. I'll take it. And I Love think, that. actually, I know a Ewan McGregor is in it, spoiler alert, auditioning for David or Michael, but actually he's got the right amount of like, you can sort of shit on Ewan McGregor from a height and you'd feel really sorry for him. Do you know what I mean? Like he's quite a, like he he commands both respect and you sort of want to give him a bit of a cuddle. Mm. So I, I might go with Ewan McGregor. Well, that's the way you're looking like, yeah. Respect and a cuddle. Yeah. Fine. Um, and then I might take, I feel like someone asked me this question about me during season one and I someone like Florence Pugh she's yeah, yeah. You know she's what I mean? great. Oh, yeah punchy but I don't want her to take my part <laughs> yeah but she's very good and, and just sort of similar air maybe oh, yeah talk. thank you I, I think it, I think it was during the first series that um there was like that online test who you could find out which stage oh yeah was there. do you remember yeah. I don't did know you get I yourselves 
Oh, I did. I did get myself. Oh, there you go. I don't remember. No, I don't think I got me. I think I got David or something. Yeah, (laughs) I got Michael, but you know, we're both well. So, you know, (laughs) I mean, I was quite happy with that. I mean, um, so, um, you know, Simon, you you become somewhat of a a therapist later on in the series. You you bring the two together. What was that like um, with David and, and Michael? Again, working with them again, I suppose. Well, it was... It was, it was, I mean, working with them is, is a, is a joy. I think last night was the first, cause we watched it in its entirety. And I think that might be the first time that I've watched them all in a row like that, mm. <clears throat> sort of binge them one after the other. And unlike the first series, there is, there's much more of David and Michael talking to other people actually than themselves. Mm. And that is a, that's a deliberate thing because I sort of, we don't have the neighbor story or anything in the second series. Mm. So what I sort of wanted was that this, the second series is a sort of love story and it's it's two people who have not been able to spend time with each other and are really missing each other and are having to and are sort of losing a handle on who they are now mm. you know and i think that's what i hope in in my loftiest and most pretentious way is what we're saying with all the different people playing them and that sort of montage where different people are saying no michael's about this david's about this this mm. is his these are their flaws these are their strengths <clears throat> that they just get into a place of going i i'm just blank now I don't know who I am anymore which I think is something a lot of people are going through at this sort of at this sort of time so for me in the middle to pop up and go let's just try to get you talking mm. again is a, is a I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that anybody's problems are fixed as simply as that but it, I hope the show takes you on a journey of going you start at this place and your your relationships have really been put through the ringer and your relationship with yourself is being put through the ringer and at the end when they finally meet again you go that's cathartic cathartic exactly so i'm i was very happy to be the the therapist for that i think you've summed it up rather beautifully there that um staged is you know to some extent all about um relationships and and kind of there, there is this journey that both those characters go on throughout the whole show um lucy kind of was that interesting for you to see with your character essentially i say character you play essentially playing yourself well i am definitely playing myself yeah. in the second one i i had trouble in the first series I think we've spoken about this, haven't we? But I, my brother and I are real top buddies in real life. And and actually I remember being a kid and watching you act back when you acted more than you directed. And if you got cast as like a villain or in a play or something and people were a bit mean to you, I found it quite um, distressing to watch. I didn't really like, even though I knew it was play acting, I didn't really like seeing people be mean to you. And so suddenly in the first series, I'm obviously, some years older now but when you were like yeah people are going to be mean to me and it's you you're going to be mean to me you know I I found it really icky actually Mm. and it is odd being in something where everyone is playing a version of yourself but you're one of the people in the first series who that wasn't a version of me at all actually you know I mean wealthy (laughs) Uh, human rights lawyer no um (laughs) Uh, grumpy bitch no I hope not um so the, the the first series like was quite an odd one in terms of the relationships it felt much more like a little bit being an outsider everyone's playing versions of themselves mm-hmm. and actually mm-hmm. I'm playing something very weird and and having to play these scenes with you where I'm just an absolute twat and um but the second one yeah I mean it's lovely to watch and in terms of the bits that I'm in it's it is very much mirroring life because you know mm-hmm. the sort of getting to film these scenes with Anna and Georgia when we're all sort of texting each other back and forth and becoming a bit pally anyway and you see the characters sort of begin to just get to know each other and become a bit pally and it is a weird art mirrors life Mm. situation um but yeah everyone who works on it has been such a joy there hasn't been a single bad egg in the whole gang Mm. so yes to make something about relationships with a bunch of lovely people is divine mm. do you all have like a whatsapp group now where you all where you all talk <laughs> we don't do we do not yeah. there are there are separate oh, right. no one big <laughs> yeah 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 i just thing. assume you'd all have like just messaging like uh, michael sheen oh, hi mike you know just all that sort of thing but i guess not <laughs> um Sorry, the, I, I, the, the last question that I, i've got is stage essentially brings up the theme that we are all 
a little bit stiff in getting back to what what we're doing, you know, and, and David mentions it right at the end of the series how he feels a bit weird going back to acting. Um, you know, because you have been working throughout lockdown on stage, when you actually got back onto, say, set or doing work um, aside from stage, did you find it a little bit strange? Uh, Simon? Well, yeah, I mean, I... They're, they're... I've been very lucky, independent of stage, I've I've directed a couple of sort of charity and fundraising mm. things, for, one for the Oxford Playhouse and one for the for the Donmar Warehouse. And yeah, to be back in those spaces again with people, it does feel a bit like you're running for the first time in a while. You know, the, mm. the muscles are there. Everything that the, 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 I was going to say, the training. You know, I'm not. I don't. I don't mean. You know, mm. but sort of. The, the the understanding of it is there it just hasn't been exercised in a while and someone will ask you a question you go yeah you usually exactly. the answer, usually the answer to that would be immediate it's just going to take me a just 15 seconds just mm. walk around the block and come back and i'll have a solution and i think that it's a bit like socializing as well i mean i've certainly logic. found i've i've had a couple of instances we've pretty much been very very cautious as a as a gang haven't we as a bubble but you know, I've seen a couple of friends where I've just gone for a walk with them or something. And I remember seeing one friend for 45 minutes and coming back and just collapsing with exhaustion because actually mm. sort of being, trying to be perky and on mm. form and like chat and also under the circumstances where even if you're staying distant from each other, you're suddenly going, well, actually, am I putting myself a bit at risk? There's, there's an element of, there's a frisson of danger to yeah. every single yeah. thing. And it's, it's, not, it's not even afterwards for me. When I was in, when I was in Los Angeles with my, with my girlfriend, I met some of her friends mm. and I'd sort of forgotten how to do small talk. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because all, the yeah. only people I've spoken to were either in this situation, which is very lovely when I'm, I'm talking about something a I know very well, thing. a specific yeah. thing. Or I'm talking to people, I, my friends, mm. who I can fall back into that very easily. But to meet somebody new and be like, who are you? This yeah. me? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what us? You like book? The book? Yeah. Like, <laughs> in a house or a flat? Apple? Apple? Do you have a garden? Road. Um, <laughs> was, was so strange. But then again, that was that was a deliberate thing in the in the very final scene where David and Michael meet, that mm. they sort of they sort of have this weird don't actually are, are know you what coming to say. out, window yeah. down. Yeah. I'll get you on that again, shall I? Should we go yeah. back to that? <laughs> yeah. That feels more. That yeah, and, and can I just say, um, I loved the. I, I assume it was some sort of a, a blooper or something, right at the oh, end. Like, that so was good. genius. I thought whoever did that, brilliant. Well, um, it really takes a while to clock, doesn't it? You are at yeah. first. Like, oh, we were in a scene, and then yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You know, when they were saying things like slate, and I've like like hearing those words back when you know back when I I could go outside and film. It's just like, hey, what's going on? What is going on here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and and just finally, um. To, to you both, why should somebody watch Staged? Uh, Lucy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, I think it's, t it, it's actually, it's total escapism, even though it's about a situation that we're all in. Yeah. I think it's total escapism. I think for a minute you obsess about their world and their version of the problem and maybe don't quite feel like we've all got all these worries that I think are very close to the surface all the freaking time and I think that's that's why it's so lovely because I think there's a mixture of you know a lot of people have said it makes them feel a bit less alone you know it speaks to things that we're all going through but it also makes you just worry about their worries for a split second um so and I hope you know it will provide for exactly that reason it'll be escapist and joyful long after this is over it'll it's you know it's fun to see and like you said it's about relationships but yeah I would say it's a really lovely bit of escapism actually that also speaks to our lives yeah um mm -hmm. couldn't have summed it up better there oh, um, great. Simon. um to both of you congratulations on the series um thank you very much and have a lovely day Thanks, you have Sam. a lovely day Happy New Year. amazing